All right, let's make a coil. A uh, coil is somewhat like a clay snake. Uh, I start out with a chunk, uh, somewhat like a hot dog or a snicker bar um, is a good starting point. And then from there, I'll be able to go in and modify and, and change for what I need. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to roll a good one and then we'll talk about changing from there. So you can do two things. You can have a nice even roll. You can have one that's fat to thin, but what we want to avoid is the bumpy and lumpy and uneven edges. So a lot of people are just gonna wanna take their hands and roll back and forth and back and forth. Uh, but here's my recommendation. If you're gonna start, I've got some areas that are a little bumpy and lumpy here. Start with smooth edges. So go ahead and smooth those out to get those uh, bumps out of the way. If this is rough to smooth, then spray a little bit of water on it to dampen it up a little bit. Uh, and I normally, to start off in somewhat of a rounded shape, I'm taking my fingers and kind of rounding this as I turn it and getting those corners smoothed down so it's not going to be a box. It's going to already be somewhat of a cylinder. So that kind of gives it more of that hot dog shape. Um, all right, I've got this. This is a good starting point. When I roll, I don't want to go back and forth and back and forth to the same depth. So what I try to do instead is I try to extend a longer roll and then bring it back. And I also will work like from one side to the other. So the goal is to not have it the same length of the roll every time and not have your hands pushing on the same spot every time. That's where you'll have dents uh, and bumps and lumps. I recommend light pressure. So I'm gonna keep my hands moving around and if I see it's getting tall in one spot, I can adjust that. I don't wanna push hard, push hard, because then I'm gonna get one like this that is a little taller than it is wide. Uh, so recommend a nice even push back and forth. So the pressure, as you apply pressure, light pressure is gonna give you a nice clean and consistent coil. If you're pushing really hard, then you're gonna get an uneven spot. Uh, so if I push really hard, you can see right here in this middle part, see where I pushed real hard and it created like a little crease. Uh, you can go in and smudge this over and refill that, uh, but I recommend making sure that your clay is hydrated. So maybe give it a light spray and then smooth in those areas where you're off, re Squeeze down your edges and then start rolling. For whatever reason, a little bit of moisture makes it easier, but I want to try to do more of an even push. And I prefer, instead of my bumpy fingers here, I prefer to roll more with my palm to get a really nice coil um, and then let it roll kind of out onto my fingers after that. As you can see, this is getting longer, but I've got a pretty cylindrical coil. Um, no bumps, no lumps, take some time to push those out. Make sure you keep spraying as you need. Um, if I wanted to cut this, so like I'll go ahead and just, you can press it with just about anything. Just give it a little chop. Um, you can clean up those edges and make that another clean part of your coil. But many of you will need this. Say I wanted a coil to be fat at one end and getting skinnier at the other. I'll come in and just put more pressure and roll more to this opposite end down here. And then when I get to the top, I'm not going to put that kind of pressure at the top. I'm just going to do light pressure where I want it to be fat and put heavier pressure where I want it to thin. Remember, not too, too heavy. Heavier pressure here gives me that skinnier end. Lighter pressure at the top gives me a fatter coil. So if you notice, this is if like I wanted to do a tail, you could have like a nice tail that tapers down in size. You can use your fingers to make that more of, a, of an even point. That could be the tail of an animal or a, a worm or a snake. Uh, but this end is definitely fatter and this end is definitely skinnier. If you get cracks that show up, you can repair them uh, by giving them a little bit of spray and then come over and take that area that had those cracks and smudge your finger over them where you sprayed. But there's one thing you need to know about coils. Those cracks will, will not come back if you leave this and don't move it. But with a coil, the more I bend, the more I flex, my clay is going to get weak. So if I'm moving it a bunch and changing my mind, see how these cracks are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it just falls off. Uh, so I would say with this piece, I can move it a little bit, but then I need to leave it or spray it and smooth it. 
but I could move it a few times and repair it. But then once I get it here, I need to leave it here. If every time I pick it up, it moves and shifts, I'm going to start seeing these cracks show up. Uh, so take your time. If you get a little too far and too deep on the cracks, then it's worth it just to smush it, spray it, and re-roll it. And I would start just by getting kind of that general hot dog shape like we talked about. Make sure it's hydrated enough. Get all those little creases out. And I would start over with a piece like this. Uh, but keep rolling. And you can go super thin. You can go uh, really fat, a whole variety. Uh, just control with your pressure.